The original chain fly, as posted on to YouTube, was designed to simulate wriggling behavior you're seeing here in midge larva. This video shows an improved wire loop method of tying this same fly that gives an improved wriggling action. So to show you wriggling in natural uh, blood worms, I went down to my local bait dealer and bought some worms that he calls blood worms or red wigglers, he also called them. And here I'm comparing them to two one inch pieces of chain and these chains are 0.4 millimeters wide. These are the chains I used to tie this fly. And here's some of the, the naturals. You can see the wriggling there. So that's one thing that we want to take away from it, that, that when disturbed, these guys wriggle, as you can see. Um, and the other thing we want to take away is the length and the width. So we, the, you can see the chain is 0.4. These guys are about 0.4 in length, uh, width as well. You can see, well, that might be just a piece of one, but they range on up to probably two inches, which would be 50 millimeters. Um, also, this uh, segmentation in some of the larger guys, when they stretch out, you can see the segmentation, which the chain shows very well as well. Finally, the color is uh, from, we see red forms as well as uh, light brown. So that's, the, these are the design elements, light brown to red, segmented size 0.4 millimeter by about 25 millimeters or one inch and the movement that they make is either a snake-like movement or wriggling. Today I'm tying an updated version of the chain fly which is another video I posted on YouTube. This is uh, tying a midge larva using the wire loop method. The uh, method of making the wire loops in this 34 gauge Stainless steel wire is given in the back following the fly tying video. The recipe as well is given in back. But I start to start off, I use a nano silk in the red. Uh, well, I'm, I'm tying on a, a 206BL Tamco hook. Um, the reason I've gone to the chain fly is because it's the only material that I think you can get the wriggling behavior that we saw in the previous, uh, the foregoing video. So tying in with the red thread, I do a short thing, uh, tie in at the head, and I use a razor blade to cut off the thread so I don't get a, ta a big tag in. Um, I've already threaded the chain on the small loop that, uh, and then I gotta tie it in using the pinch method. I don't worry about cinching up the loop at the start. But after I get it tied in, then I pull up the loop, but I don't want to do it too tightly because that way I'll restrict the movement of the chain. This is the 0.4 millimeter serpentine chain, about 25 millimeters or one inch long, just like we saw in the uh, video of the wriggling um, or blood worms. So I've tied in and I pulled up the chain and then I bend it back over, press it down and capture it with my thread. I'm going to cover the chain and cut off. I use an old pair of scissors the chain's pretty tough on them. Yeah, I bent over that little bit of tag end of stainless steel. Now I'm going to whip finish. This is an extremely simple fly, but effective in runoff conditions when most of these worms are washing off into the stream. I whip finish these twice 
but I don't use head cement. There it is, the uh, chain bloodworm. You can see the wriggling behavior. So there's a technique I need to show you about working with chain flies, and that's to make a uh, the wire loop method. We have to actually form a loop in this 34-gauge stainless steel wire, shown in here, that I buy from Amazon. I've gone to slightly thicker in this revised version of the uh, uh, chain midge larva. And here what I do is form the wire around a straight pin held in the vise and pinch it with my needle nose tweezers to form a, a loop like this and then I've then I thread the chain on as shown here and I'm ready to tie the blood worm there's one other thing I need to talk about in using serpentine chains these chains are made by putting a twist into the chain the and compressing the links, and that can make the chains pretty stiff, as you can see here. That's not going to be very floppy, which is what we want for fly tying. Um, so what I do is I chuck it up like this, and I take a pair of 4-inch uh, locking pliers, and I pull on it. Or the other thing is I inspect and see which way the twist is. I think we need to go counterclockwise on this. So I'm going to untwist a few times and you can see the twist going in. And then I pull on it. Oh, broke it. There was a weak spot in that chain. I saw it. Having bad luck today. And then I pull on it gently. But you can see how that's loosened up the chain. Here is a red midge larva that I've tied up and it's gotten quite stiff because of the thread along the shank of the hook. And after, this is the same fly after I've stretched it. To get the fly to wiggle, I use a uro-nymphing rig with an anchor fly on the point that's heavy enough in a given flow regime to allow bottom bouncing. Bottom bouncing induces a subtle jigging action that simulates a swimming motion in the dropper fly. 